history of the conflict which threatens to tear the club apart. Hull's acceptance of a seat on the board coincides with United's best spell of the season, a run which has taken them to second place in Division 2. Most observers feel that an end to the two-year power struggle at St James Park will give the club the boost it needs for the final push towards promotion. Hall himself is looking to the future. I look forward to uh, total cooperation now with Gordon and the rest of the board for the future of Newcastle United. The only thing that matters. Are uh, all your differences settled? Yes. And I too look forward to working with John um, during the coming months and years. Uh, and uh, we have uh, agreed together that uh, the concern is to work in cooperation with one another for the future of Newcastle United. And we hope that very shortly that future will be in the first division of the football league. Yeah, yeah. Hall has stated that he will reduce his 40% holding on the board to 10%. It's understood that he's agreed to do this because of the board's recent change of position in relation to a shares issue. That should happen shortly after the beginning of next season, when, hopefully, Newcastle are a first division club once again. Among those welcoming the outbreak of peace today are Hall's supporters, the United Supporters for Change Group. It's just over two years to the day since John Hall fired the opening shots in the battle for what he called the democratisation of Newcastle United. This is how the battle was fought. In April 1988, Hall calls for the restructuring of the club's shareholding, saying it's time for a change. The board retaliates by saying that Hall is dragging the club's name through the mud. Later in the month, Hall's Magpie Group meet for the first time amid claims that they're on the way to victory. In June, Stan Seymour stands down as chairman to be replaced by Gordon McKeague. McKeague relishes the challenge and the battle begins. The Magpie Group then reveals a £10 million strategy for the club, a scheme described by McKeague as long on gloss, short on detail. McKeague says nothing short of a £20 million takeover package will be put before shareholders and he turns down talks with Hall. In September 1988, the power struggle begins in earnest with the Magpie Group offering £500 for every 50 pence share. This is doubled to £1,000 later in the month. Two months later, Hall's biggest coup. Director George Dixon sells his 120 shares to the Magpie Group. In February 1989, a High Court judge accuses Dixon of betraying the club. United win the voting rights to 26 of his shares. In May, United are relegated and mining millionaire Bob Young replaces Dixon on the board, calling for peace talks. Three months later, a ceasefire. Hall and McKeague open negotiations, but the United Supporters for Change boycott home games. Following extensive talks, Hall and fellow Magpie Group member David Stevenson, the Newcastle Brewery's managing director, are offered places on the board. They turn the offer down. In October, Newcastle produced plans for a share issue. Four months later, the details are revealed. In March this year, these plans are passed at an extraordinary general meeting with the backing of the Magpie Group. This opens the way for further meetings between the two sides. The peace talks are successful. The rebel supporters call off their boycott. Hall finally accepts the offer to join the board and Newcastle surge towards promotion. <laughs>